Punch Professor here, gonna give you a condensed cram course lesson and the speed bag. Some techniques, five different techniques crammed together uh, for a speed bag lesson. Five techniques will be what I call the basic rhythm. The first technique, basic, basic rhythm. Second technique, Peter, fist roll. Third technique will be linking. Linking. The fourth technique will be the double punch. And the last technique will be uh, pinning, also known as trapping. So I'm going to go ahead and give a demo. At the same time, I'll be giving you the technique, the form that you'll need to accomplish this. It's a condensed version, but if you follow my instructions, you'll get it. Basic rhythm. Typically the first technique you learn when you're starting to learn the speed bag. Myself, I like to teach the fist roll as the first lesson in speed bag. Uh, reason being, the basic rhythm is, is actually very difficult uh, as compared to the rest of the techniques uh, which are much more easy. I think the, of all the techniques I believe the, the fist roll is probably the easiest if you follow the instructions. Difficult as can be if you don't follow the instructions to the T. First instructions, elbows are up. This is the fundamentals. Later, as you become more, um, more adept at, at this, these techniques, you, you'll bring your elbows down in a, more of a fighting uh, position. But for right now, fist roll, elbows up. Second thing, I get a slight bend. I'm exaggerating now so you can see what I'm doing. I don't want my, my arms out in front of me like this, hitting the bag and the fist roll. I don't want that because the, the bag will run down my arm and get away from me. I'm actually trapping the bag in. Now this is exaggerated, I'm not that much. I'm just barely to where the, it's not gonna roll down my arms. Next thing is, I'm not wanting to hit the bag down the bottom. I'm actually a little bit above halfway up the bag is where I wanna get it. And I wanna trap it up near the platform rather than hitting it here and having it travel to the platform. So. Just give you a, uh, a little demonstration of it. Keeping it up closer to the platform and I got a slight bend in my arms like a V so it doesn't get away. Now one of the main instructions you wanna follow is this. You want knuckles to travel over knuckles, not knuckles over my wrist. I've got knuckles going over the top of my knuckles, okay? Another thing is this. Typically, as a person goes faster, he makes his rotations bigger, and he doesn't get back to the bag on time because the bag is traveling the same timing each time it does anything. It's traveling the same timing. <clears throat> if you travel at a different timing, in other words, I'm small and my fists are tight right now over knuckles. If I try to go faster and get bigger, I'm not going to get back to that bag. The timing is going to be different. So the, the thing you want to do is you want to keep a tight fist roll. In fact, if you do mess up, it's because your hands are clacking. That shows that you're actually determined to keep your hands tight. Okay? Very tight. To where, When you mess up, the good mess up is that your hands hit each other. Okay? One more time, a little demonstration. Got it trapped up to the platform. I got a slight bend in my arms. The bag can't hit me because my hands are in front of me. I can't get past my hands. I don't have to worry about that. That's the fist roll.
second technique from the Jungle Camp Gym by the Punch Professor is what they call basic rhythm. I call it bicycle chain. Basic rhythm. I call it bicycle chain. The reason I call it bicycle chain. Try to keep my other hand up as I'm hitting with my left. I got my right hand up. Good practice. Good habit. Basic rhythm. Now what I'm doing, this is how you learn. By knowing exactly what it is you have to do. This is the instruction. This is why I call it bicycle chain. This bag, like I said, makes the same distance every time. It don't get bigger. It doesn't get smaller. It makes the same distance. So with my body mechanics, I need to make my rotation the same size. If I change the size of my rotation, I'm not going to get back to the bag on time. We're going to have two different timings. <clears throat> Why I call it bicycle chain is I'm traveling from my set position, which is right here near my jaw, out to the bag, back to my jaw. And I'm covering a distance in a similar fashion as a bicycle chain goes around the front sprocket then the back sprocket. In other words, your bicycle doesn't pedal like this. I hope it doesn't anyhow. Okay, and this is typically the mistake people make when they're hitting on a speed bag and they don't haven't had a real lesson. But this is what they do. And they chop down on it. You don't want to do that. You want to go into the bag and the elevation my hand doesn't fall. The rotation that I'm making is very similar to the bicycle chain as it travels around the front sprocket to the back sprocket. I'm actually brushing my whiskers on the return on my rotation here. Okay. Keeping the elbows up. That's the fundamentals. Like I said, as you get more proficient, you can bring them down in such a way that you're more in a boxing stance. Actually, I'm punching them with the knuckles now. Not on the side of the hand. Bicycle chain, basic rhythm. You hit the bag with the side of your hand. And the fundamental of the exercise. In the advanced, you can hit it with your knuckles. That's basic rhythm, bicycle chain. Practice it as it's been taught, and you'll get it. Third technique, from here in central Florida, 80 degrees in the early part of November. Can't beat that. Linking, third technique is linking. Linking, this is what I'm doing. It might not look like it, but that's all I'm doing. Now if I come too far out, I, I won't get back on time. I have to do the same thing. I have to make my travel the same size each time because that bag ain't going to change its travel. Okay? I'm not coming too far out. Linking. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that bag on both sides. I'm going to hit it here and travel through it and come back. This is linking right here. A little bit low on the bag. I'm hitting it down here. A little lower. Whereas the other techniques I was pretty much above the center. I'm here just slightly below the center. I'm hitting the bag and it gets out of my way. I'm not, although it looks like I might be hitting the bag and scooping and scooping under it, that's not what I'm doing. All I'm doing is this. And if you find yourself doing other than this, you ain't going to get it. You're going to waste a lot of time trying to, to accomplish nothing. Now sometimes they look like I'm scooping sometimes because I'm landing my knuckles so I'm turning my wrist. But actually all I'm doing, I'm not even using a fist, I'm just using, I'm just using my hand as a blade. I'm cutting right through it. If I stop, if I get out here and stop, that bag ain't stopping. So I, when, I, when I go again, the bag ain't going to be there. You got to drive through it. And all these things that you learn, 
You want to learn them very slow and easy and don't get disappointed. Challenge yourself. In other words, I accomplished three with my left hand. I'm going to try to beat three. This is my challenge. And look at that, I got six or seven. Now I'm going to challenge myself to see if I can beat the six or seven. Eight, nine, and ten or whatever. And try to challenge yourself. It's yourself that you're competing with, okay? You don't have to be as good as the next guy. You have to be better than you was yesterday. So there's your linking, and that's all I'm doing. Practice, is at, practice it as it's been instructed to you, and you're going to get it. It'll come to you easy. These are not hard techniques. Fourth technique in this condensed cram course speed bag lesson is the double punch. A lot of these techniques look harder than they are, but if you follow the instructions as they're dictated toward you, you're going to get these techniques. They're not that hard. Double punch. One of the keys is I'm going to punch one punch but two hands. So you hear what I'm doing? This is actually a technique that can be used in a, in a fight. Whereas I'm knocking the opponent's guard with the first and hitting them with a punch with the second. Same thing coming back. Two fists one punch. Two fists, one punch. Myself, when I learned, I made it in my mind that my fists both were, my, both my hands was holding a, a rod and they, they rode together. Okay? They rode together, this rod holding them. Now, another thing that you got to do, you got to have the rear hand, in this case is my right hand, the rear hand rides in above the, the frontal hand. The, the, the hand that's out in front is lower than the hand in the back. And it's going to hit like this. The first one's going to hit the bag and drive it into the platform. And the second one's just going to be there to catch it when it comes back. You just got to hit it good with the first hand. Keep them connected. And second hand catches the rebound. See that? I'll do it easy. See? Notice here what happened here also. Two hands hit the bag. They rode together as one. The second hand was higher. Now the second hand, which is my right, winds up out in front. It's out in front now. And this is a little more advanced. So when I come back, my right hand's the front, my left is higher. It sets itself up. Right hand's in front, left hand's in front. Now you don't have to do, this is more advanced going back and forth as I'm doing now. But what I would do if I was you and trying to learn it, this is how I'd practice it. Here's the bag coming to me, it's bouncing, it's coming to me, and I catch it with a double punch. Okay? You start getting that. You get that five times in a row, and then you know what you do? Switch over to the other side, and try to get it six times in a row. You don't want to throw, it's not one, two. It's not one, two. They're riding together. Second hand higher than the first. Follow the instructions. Okay, that's the double punch. The fifth and final lesson in this cram course speed bag lesson is what I call pinning or trapping. Uh, the four previous lessons or the four previous techniques I've shown in this lesson is something that uh, is really taught in depth by a man named Alan Kahn. Alan Kahn's famous for uh, creating the speed bag Bible, both a, a book and a tape series. He's absolutely the very best teacher there is when it comes to the speed bag on those four previous techniques. This next technique that I'm going to show you, the pinning and trapping, is something that the professional boxers used years ago that kind of got lost uh, in the 60s, 70s, somewhere in there. It kind of got lost. And it, it's not practiced that much anymore. It's, it's making a comeback. Pinning and trapping. Okay. 
Now the best way to learn anything that you're not familiar with is slow and easy. And slow and easy is, is what I'm going to show you here. Notice how I keep my hand on the bag and I'm moving slowly. Okay. Now I'm also, I'm not hitting the bag down here. I'm catching it up near the top of the bag. And I'm catching it up to the platform. I actually don't want to hit the bag here and drive it up to the platform, but rather I'd like to catch the bag as it's going to the platform and help it get there a little quicker. All right. Best way to learn it though, slow and easy. Notice I'm not even letting my hands travel far off the bat. Both hands are up high. Now I can start coming away because I'm more advanced. Pinning and trapping. Condensed version, cram course, following the instructions, none of this is hard. Punch Professor wishes you the best.